Hello, Harry. Hi, Paul. Is that your new neighbour? Yeah, I'm thinking of purchasing a golf TTI on Monday. Yeah, he's a flipping yarpy. I'll see you at pret manger for luncheon. Snout. Oh, I don't mind if I do. Plus your little car socks. No, I'll meet up with Tuscany at the Champagne Bar once she's clocked off at the bank. Hasta la vista, Tarquin. Ciao for now. I thought they were the... I quite like yuppies. They contribute to the trickle-down effect from which we all benefit. Well, you would say that, wouldn't you? You're aspiring middle class. Oh, hello, Harry. Oh, hello, Shirley. How's tricks? Oh, you know. I feel a little bit pickish. Thought I might make myself a nice little cheese and pickle sandwich for me, Dean Deans. Mm. Paul likes a nice little cheese and pickle sandwich for his Dean Deans, don't you, Paul? I do. Mm. I like ham as well. I am partial to a bit of ham. Mm. Harry, would you like a nice little cheese and pickle sandwich for your Dean Deans? Oh, yes, please, Cheryl. Bless your little cotton socks. Oh. Love, nice little cheese and pickle sandwich for your Dean Deans. Got the ham? Mm, no. No, I don't think we have. I've got a nice little bit of cheese and pickle. Oh, I'll have that then. I am partial to a nice little cheese and pickle sandwich, Harry. Without the ham. Mm. How's your Shelley getting on? My Shelley, Shirley. She's in bed with Ricketts. Oh. Bless her little con socks. You got a doily for me, Shirl? Oh! I forgot the doilies! <laughs> what is my brain like? <laughs> Bless your little con socks. How's your abortion, Shirley? Oh, I've had better. Mm. And here we are. Nice mm. little cheese and pickle sandwich for your ding-dings. Nice little cheese and pickle sandwich for your ding-dings. Oh, thank you, Shirley. Yeah, oh, yum. All right, Mr E. Hello, Kayleigh. I've had my miscarriage. I'm off to school. Nice little cheese and pickle sandwich for you, girl, yeah? For your ding-dings. Take it with you, sweetheart. No, thanks, Mum. I believe it. Bless your little cotton salt. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> It's been saying cut two Can can you spare some change for a cup of tea, please? We don't carry change, I'm afraid. We usually have a chap who gives us whatever it is. We're minor royals, you see. We've been rather overshadowed by William and Kate, but it couldn't matter less. Couldn't matter less. We still have an important role to play. But we know exactly how you feel on the tea front. I'm gasping for a cuppa, <laughs> but I'm afraid I shall have to wait till I get to my club. So we're all in the same boat. No cash for a cuppa. I'm dying for a ginger nut. Tell me, why are you in a sleeping bag in the middle of the day? Because I'm sleeping rough. Oh, you're doing your Duke of Edinburgh? <gasps> Everything's so perfect. Your dog here and such a lovely spot. It's you and the sky and the smell of fresh bed in the morning. Mm, bliss. Mm, I don't know how you keep so thin. What's your trick? Well, I ain't got enough money for food. Just had a terribly good idea. Why don't you eat those pigeons? Oh, pigeon pie is a wonderful thing. It's rather a bony bird, but with a wonderful, deep, gamey flavour. Yes, you get your dog to catch them, and then you must hang them for a couple of days to tenderise the meat. Mm. What a lovely dog. What a lovely dog. You know the old chestnut about how dogs look like their owners? Well, the rule certainly holds fast with you two, doesn't it? Look at you with your milky eyes, faraway stares, scruffy coats, <laughs> wonderful stuff. Do you have any flowers for me? Well, mine are royals, you see. They were rather prone to be given flowers by ordinary people. No. Couldn't matter less. Really, don't lose any sleep over it No, I don't suppose you will, will you? With your lovely, snuggly sleeping bag ready to take you to the land of nod any moment now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm rather envious. I could do with a tip myself. I'm afraid I shall have to wait till I get to my club. Cheerio. Bye. Canal 5. Johnny et Bing présente l'édition spéciale Citroën Chuckle Sexy. Oh. Je t'aime. Oh. Je t'aime. Oh. Bad luck and bing bang bong. Oh. oh. <rire> bing est tout fané pour le mort. <rire> 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 Ping fait pipi sur mes lèvres. 
le citron Jack and Sexy et le citron Bedroom Piercing, édition spéciale de Body Fluid. Bedroom Piercing avec un con complémentaire. Have you heard of Jimmy Carr? No. Have you heard of Dale Winton? No. Have you heard of Matt Smith? No. Have you heard of The Edge? Nobody is called The Edge. Yeah, it's probably a misprint. Have you heard of Ant? No. Have you heard of Deck? No. Well, have you heard of Ant and Deck? Yes, of course I've heard of Ant and Deck. Everybody's heard of Ant and Deck. Well, are they a queer? Well, one of them looks like queer, one of them sounds like queer. He sounds like queer and he looks like queer. That one looks like queer, that one sounds like one queer. One looks like queer, one of them sounds like queer. That one looks like queer, that one sounds one like queer. One looks like queer, the other one sounds like queer. No, 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 no. That looks one like... looks like queer, that one sounds oh, like queer. Yes, of course, yes, 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 yes. So I should think if he looks like queer, he sounds like queer, I should think they probably is a queer, yes. Yes, probably a queers. Teddy, how are you? Just finished university, which was jolly nice. No studying to speak of, fortunately. Three years of quite hard punting there, and now I'm looking for a job. Come work in television. Sounds jolly nice. What's television? <laughs> I've no idea. I've been working in television now for three years. It's ruddy good. Do I need an interview? They'll ask if you can see. I'm actually awfully good at seeing. Well, you could be director general. What does that entail? Seeing mainly and being paid. How much will I be paid if it's not too vulgar a question? It is rather a lot of the question. How much do you want to be paid? A lot, I suppose. In guineas. That can be arranged. Now, let's never mention money again. Shall I start on Monday? <laughs> no, that won't be necessary. Take a short paid sabbatical, and when you're ready, give me a call. What's your telephone number? London 123. I think I can remember that. Would you like me to write it down for you? Would you? Well, it uh, seems like a pretty good school. Mm. Well, yeah, it seems like both our girls are getting on pretty well there. Mm. Yeah, our girls are doing really well there. Really, really well. A1, 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 A1 in her last report. Your girl's not doing badly, is she? Quite a few Bs, but still uh, good. Yeah. Actually, there was something on telly about school grades in the day, wasn't there? No, no, there? no. We never watch telly ever. Although, to be fair, we did see the first season of The Killing on BBC Four iPlayer, but then we got the box set anyway. And season two we only watched on box set. And Borgen on box set. And Those Who Kill, only on box set. And Flame and Citron, on box set. We only ever watch box sets. They're so much better than all the rubbish most people watch on television. We're so much better than most people. We're much better than you. Unless you watch box sets. No, not, not really. Oh, well then, we are better than you. Cool, I can't believe you haven't seen the box set of seasons one to six of Mad Men. You haven't seen Spartacus Blood and Sand on box set? What? Surely you've seen Breaking Bad on box set. Surely you've seen that. Surely you've seen the box set of Game of Thrones. Surely. We've got a friend who still says series instead of season. He is such a wanker compared to us. Canal 5. Johnny and Bing present the edition special Citron Gourmet Romance. <laughs> <laughs> Citron Gourmet Romance. Wow, life's on fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, evening, Dougal. Good evening, Jeff. Terrible weather we're experiencing down here in London. Yeah, terrible, isn't it? I heard on the weather forecast that it's not raining in Scotland. Really? Aye, only in England. Aye, not in Scotland. No, in Scotland the weather's very, very pleasant indeed. Well, it's down here in England, it's quite to the contrary, aye. Oh, yes, the weather's much better in Scotland than England, aye. Right. What are you having? Everything's better in Scotland. Hmm. So what are you having? Well, I shall have a pint of beer, please. Hmm. Do you have any Scottish beer? No, just the usual, Dougal. No Scottish beer at all? No, as always, we have no Scottish beer. Oh, that is a disappointment, oh dear. It's very, very difficult to get a good English beer, I find. Whereas in Scotland, it's practically impossible not to be served a tremendous pint. Three pounds, please. Oh, that is dear. In Scotland, the beer is of better quality and much more competitively priced. Mm. Everything's better in Scotland. Oh, there goes my telephone, invented by a Scotsman. Hello, Mother. How's the weather in Scotland? Oh, that'll be the English weather, moving north. Did anybody about him, pal? We know all like that. 
I take a sideways look at life. Imagine if we didn't have doors. It'd be like we're all living in one massive room. Spooky. I see a man, a quiet man with a dark beard. He likes to wear a black suit to his work. He enjoys his work driving the steamroller all around the town, helping the people out. Perhaps one day, while you are buying your morning newspaper, he will drive his steamroller all over you. Driving his steamroller all over you and your newspaper. People will see you all around the town. There he is, stuck on the steamroller, reading his newspaper, like a very thin, cartoon cat. I curse you. £180 for a new time. I was avoiding this cat and I smashed into the curb. Oh, we love curb. Got it on box set. And Modern Family. So brilliant. And The Office. But only the American seasons. Oh, God, not the English seasons. No, 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 oh, no, God, no. no. The oh, not the box the set, no. Oh, God, no. But surely you've got seasons one to seven of Curb on box set. Surely! Surely you've got Curb on box set. You have to. Everyone loves Curb. Everyone's got Curb. You know, in Scotland, they tend pure chocolate boys. What, like Hershey? Yeah, like Hershey. Yeah, you know, the Scotch, they're very healthy. You know, they walk on walls. Healthy? You ever seen a Scotch egg? Shut up, Larry! Oh! Larry! What? Larry? What? what I do? <laughs> Larry! Look, I know you're mad at me, but I would never knowingly leave my semen in our friend's guacamole. Budding entrepreneurs Ken and Brian from Brian Farnet have developed an app that they hope will download some interest from the dragons. Hello dragons, I am Ken and this is my partner Brian and we are asking for an investment of £81,325.71 for a 16.4432% investment in our company. Most of the dragons seem confused already but the dead dragon's intrigued. Brian and I have developed an app. Brian and I have developed an app. It predicts what you're going to say next. It predicts what you're going to say next. Everyone's going to want it. Everyone's going to want it. Can I just say, I sold my dog's kennel to start my first business. Can I just say, I sold my dog's kennel to start my first business. That can never work. That can never work. It doesn't even know what I'm going to say next. It doesn't even know what I'm going to say next. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm out. I'm out. I like it. I like it. It's clever like me. It's clever like me. And I'm going to make you an offer for £81,325.71. And I'm going to make you an offer for £81,325.71. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We will not let you down. What a mark. Let's get smashed and blow the rest of the cash down the bookies. That Scottish one gets on my tits. I can't wait to piss this all up the wall. So it was all going so well, but then, instead of saying what you were going to say next, your phone started saying what you were going to say in half an hour. I wonder if he has studs in his nipples? Parking packed away, oh. Parking packed away, oh. 
Barking Pat away o and his black and white cat away o Forget to feed the meter, Pat away o's eager to pop a ticket on your car and get you towed away o Hello, Parking Pat away Why are you pacing up and down in a frantic fashion? Oh, you're over there. And there's a car parked on a double yellow line on the other side of a busy dual carriageway. The driver's gone to help an old lady who's collapsed in the street. But that doesn't make his parking violation any less serious, does it, Parking Patawayo? Now the paramedics arrived and the driver's returning to his car. Frustrating, isn't it, Parking Patawayo? The nice man's going to end up keeping £60 pounds that he's no longer technically entitled to, just for helping that poor old lady. What the? How the? Ha! Super Patawayo, we salute you. Everyone loves Parking Patawayo. Oh, hi, Thicko. Marcus. I hear your husband left you. Yeah. Is he all right? I don't know. He hasn't called the kids or anything, so... Well, if he does, give him my best, will you? What are you up to tonight? Fancy coming out for a drink? Oh, um, I don't know. You've got a live-in nanny, haven't you? Yeah, but... Good. So you're coming for a drink with me. Now, this lovely cabinet here, I thought of you the moment I saw it wasn't selling. Oh, how nice. How much is it? Uh, to you, £2,000. Oh, it's a bloody parking warden. Hang on a sec. Look after the shop for me. Oi, wanker! What the hell do you think you're doing? Hello. How are you today? It's a lovely day. Oh, for God's sake. Yes! How much is that thing? Um, that's £2,000. <laughs> Don't be stupid. It says £1,000. Oh. And it's not even worth that. I'll give you 300 Um, oh, gosh, I'm not... 200 for cash. Oh. Hurry up, it's going down. Here. Oh, to take it out for me. Right. What the hell's going on? I bought this from your shop and I'm taking it home. How much did she pay? £200. You'd better be bloody joking. And that's only four times more than I paid for it. She was very happy to sell it to me and I've given her the money. You idiot. You fool. You... woman. Sorry, Marcus. Out. I'll see you at Cooper's, 8.30 tonight. Oh, er... Uh... So what are you doing tonight? Do you fancy a drink? With an idiot like you. Oh, don't get all smart, Alec, with me. You're not ageing as well as you think, you know. Do you or don't you? Yes, you rude git. Uh, Thicko, I can't make tonight. Something's come up. Out. Oh, well, never mind. I probably would... Out! Anyway, 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 I haven't told you about my new young man, have I? Howard. He's ever such a gentleman, he is. He took me to the Windsor Arms last night. That's right, the Windsor Arms. I don't suppose you've ever been to the Windsor Arms, have you? No, I don't think so. Ever so nice in there it is. They've got a deer's head on the wall and the barman's called Gerard. Much better than the dirty old dog and bucket your Terry takes you to. Poo. You can smell the lavatories from the snag in there and the crisps are always soggy. Anyway, Howard, my new young man, proper gentleman he is, he bought me three pims and lemonades. Yes, three pims and lemonades. And he treated me to scampi and chips at the Blue Lagoon. And when he dropped me off, he only tried for tops. Brand new Austin Atley he's got. Ah, well, I'm very much looking forward to it, Podrick. I don't think there's ever been such a rivalry as the one that we enjoyed this race today. I wanted 992, 993, 994. You wanted 995, 996. I wanted 997. You wanted 998, 999. I forget whether Mrs. Baker won it in 2000. Oh, yes, of course. Mrs. Annabel Baker, wonderful character. Her two lovely daughters, Margaret and Joan. Always to be seen tramping the course early in the morning in their oversized gumboots. I wanted 2001, 2002, 2003. 
2004, 2005. It's always been a fantastic one. It was a beautiful day when the Harris were running with a girl in the wood. Oh, well, he had two of them, didn't he? And had one of them had been dead, didn't he? <laughs> well, you know, some of the characters in the past, no, I was only thinking the other day, maybe they would be your tusk. No, he's a wee, well, uh, but of course, before that, no, he went back a long way. <laughs> <laughs> but on a serious note, my syphilis is back. And I tell you, oh, look at him for it's a blasted nuisance. Oh, it's a blasted nuisance, I would say, yes. I saw my syphilis is back running at Doncaster earlier in the year as a wonderful animal, but well off the pace of a blasted nuisance. Talking of syphilis, did you see Phyllis and Peter last night? They're back from their safari in Africa, full of stories of lions and monkeys and what have you. Wonderful stuff, absolutely wonderful. Stayed in a lovely little hotel, used to belong to Peter Big. Ah, I mean, I think I that. They're in Kenya there. They're full of Russians these days. Uh, full of Russians. Everywhere is full of Russians these days, isn't it? <laughs> you know, we went to Louis last night. You went to Louis? What'd you order at Louis? The shrimp. You want the shrimp at Louis? Yeah, the shrimp at Louis. No one has the shrimp at Louis. I order the shrimp at Louis. Oh, yeah, Larry. Always to be different, huh? No, I feel sorry for the guy who brings the shrimp. He only has one leg. Shut up, Larry. <coughs> Larry! Why? Larry! Larry? What? <coughs> Larry! Look, I know you're mad at me, but I would never knowingly leave my cock ring in our friend's calamari. I say, Chatters, here's an idea. Let's up sticks for a while and pop off to the North Pole. Those Norwegian blighters are already on their way, and it wouldn't do for them to get there first. Capital idea. When should we go? Well, let's have pudding first and then go, shall we? Excellent. Who should we take with us? Let's see, we'll need someone to laugh at to keep up Ra when things get sticky. Good heavens, that's rather fortunate. It's Lardy Daniels. I say, Lardy, old man. Polish off lunch, old boy. We're off to the North Pole. Oh, good crack. What's the weather like up there? <laughs> Pretty chilly, I should imagine. But you've got plenty of insulation. What? Oh, good joke, Dante. I like a good-natured doshing. Yes, well, laughing at you will keep us all entertained during the long, nippy nights, Lardy. Good point. Do you think we need to take any equipment, Dante? Warm shirt and tie, spare pair of pants, perhaps, tea bags, tent, possibly. I wouldn't want to make a fuss. All we need now is a chap who knows about geography and we're ready to go. Chivers, which way's north? North, sir? Uh, uh. Get a study jacket, man. You're coming to the North Pole. Very good, sir. After pudding. <laughs> of course. I nearly forgot. You'd never forget pudding, would you, laddie? That's why you're so fat. <laughs> 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 Work experience. Uh, is there any chance of that cup of tea that I asked you for an hour ago? Thanks, work experience. Mm. Oh, work experience. You have to boil the kettle when you make a cup of tea. Please. Thanks. In fact, look, don't bother. Just, just leave the cup of tea there. And could you come and put some stamps on these envelopes for me, please? Put them in the out tray, just over there, OK? Thank you. Uh, no work experience. They peel off like this, OK? Peel off, put them there. Just like that. See? OK? Just like that. OK? It's the wrong way up, but, but good anyway. I'm sure the Queen won't mind. Work experience. You dropped all the letters on the way, except one. Would you pick them up, please?
Here's an invitation to me and me fiance's engagement party. Teddy Buckle and I kindly request your company at the Bull and Last. Don't bring food, because we've got sausage rolls. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure I'd be delighted to come to you and your fiancé's engagement. Uh, I've been to all these others. Anyway, 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 anyway. Forgot what I was going to say now. Anyway, it's your family that lets the old neighbourhood down. Proper stench that is coming from your house. Carbolic is what you need. Tidiness is what you could do with. Slovenliness is what some call it. Bit tarty you are, some would say. Not me, mind. And your brother, what a tear away he is. He threw a stone at that poor deaf and dumb man who lives with his mum in the prefab. Ooh, libel, that is. Libel. I'll have you know that my mum does for the vicar who knows a bishop who knows a judge. So we'll see you in court. You see if we don't. You could be hanged for that, you know. Libel. Hanged by your neck until you be dead. Here, do you bring those Chelsea buns? Yeah, I've got two of them, but Fatty Frieda spotted me on the way and she pitched one. So we'll have to share. And well, anyway. Anyway. And anyway. Well, anyway. <laughs> Jeff wants a wooden toilet seat. I mean, who wants a wooden toilet seat? I mean, Larry would never want a wooden toilet seat. That's the one good thing you can say about Larry. <laughs> Larry! I took... I, I get confused with my left, my right, I... I mean, come on, I would never knowingly urinate on our friends' sleeping children. Stay with us here on BBC HD. More comedy coming up as we head to heaven next. You're not even beginning to look old. We strive to increase production of flat-screen televisions so we can enjoy Harry and Paul. Oh! 